Hello YouTube, what's going on? This is Cordell Smith of the fishing videos that I've made called Let's Go Fishing. Now, probably most of you guys who have subscribed and liked and watched, or at least watched my videos that I've posted, the two videos that I posted, I greatly appreciate it, you know, with the subscriptions and the comments that you've made and everything about me using different type of lures and how they're awesome to work like that and stuff like that. I really appreciate it. But the reason why there was only two videos made and I sort of stopped is because fishing was, is only seasonal here. I mean, ice fishing is not really something that would actually fly well in our waters because, you know, it doesn't freeze over all that well. So <laughs> otherwise I'd be out there in the winter time, dead of winter ice fishing, putting on videos for you guys. But maybe in future reference, if I ever find a better place to go, I will actually do so for you guys as promised. But uh, with the season coming up in April, I will be having more fishing videos come out on YouTube and more reviews and different types of rods and all kinds of talks and stuff like that that you guys can comment on and, you know, you guys can suggest me things to use, different rods to use and stuff like that, different lures, I mean, if they work and if they work and all that kind of jazz, good jazz and stuff like that. So, I just, long story short, I want everybody to know that more videos will be coming out and, you know, those who subscribed and liked and basically left positive feedback because, you know, this is my first time. This is my first time doing this, like, getting used to the whole YouTube chain thing and making videos and stuff like that. This is my first time, so kind of want to get my foot in the door, so... I greatly appreciate it, you know, what little likes and little subscriptions that you guys gave to me, gave to me, I really appreciate that because I'm still sort of new, right? So with that being said, more will be coming your way and I'm going to crack really down hard this spring and summer and fall on some videos of 2014. So I really appreciate it and I hope you guys still stay tuned to keep watching me. Because there's going to be a lot more that we're going to do and stuff like that. Like I got some friends helping me and I got some better cameras besides using my phone. <laughs> like what I was using my phone with the last two episodes, that's all I used. And I might invest me a GoPro, I'm not too sure. A little bit on a budget right now. If I can get a GoPro, I'd be sweet right now. But right now I'm going to be doing everything by video camcorder that I bought. So, uh, hopefully... Things will go well, and I hope you guys will like what I've been doing, and I appreciate everything that you've done, uh, just to get my foot in the door, because I'm still kind of new, so thank you. Now, with that being out of the way, the fishing season's coming up. Can't wait. April 1st, first day of fishing. Bet you we're all happy waiting to get our lines out on the water right now. Well, this is just a little video review that I'm going to be putting together, just you know, to show you some things that, I've, that I'm going to be using this year. And hopefully, you know, eh, they're good things. I mean, I think they're good things. I mean, I have my preference when I like to fish. You have your preference. So don't everybody else. But, you know, nothing wrong with leaving comments on something that you th think I should suggest trying as, a, as new gear or something like that. Like, if you got an idea of what I think I should use for, like, different types of rods, different types of lures and stuff like that. You know, leave them in the comments. Uh, leave them in the comments. Don't be afraid to. And, well, I fish with two rods. Okay, I fish with two. I have one as a backup as a, for follow-up baits, and I have two. My first rod that I use, my main rod that I use, is here, is a Quantum Baitcast. I've always used Quantum. I mean, other brands are really good. Don't get me wrong. Other brands are really good, like Shimano... Fluger, Quantum, other stuff like that. Like, I, I always use Quantum because they've always been a good brand to me and other stuff like that. I just always liked Quantum for years, for as long as I can remember. So, with that being said, this is a Quantum Baitcast with a 7x0.1 gear ratio, medium action, 6'6 six six rod. And for line that I use, I use Fireline, Fireline Crystal, 10 pound test. Now, 
a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the best line out there? What's the best line to use for different types of fish like bass, pickerel, you know, stuff like that, walleye, northern pike, anything like that. Well, it all depends on what people like to use for brands. Like, you can use either braid, fluorocarbon, even monofilament. It's whatever your choice is that you think is the goodest line that you like to use. I personally like to use braid. I like to use braid. With that being said, I only use braid because it floats and it's also good for top water baits that I use because I'm a top water bait user. Like I'll, I'll tell you right now, I love using top water baits. That's all my tackle box consists of right now <laughs> is top water. Once in a while I'll throw a drop shot rig, drop shot rig, a couple Senkos once in a while like that, but I'm, I love top water. That's my thing. <laughs> so this is a two piece rod. It's two piece, as you can see there, and uh, it's a split grip type rod, which is really, really good. I find, I love split grips. I mean, some people use other different types of rods, sometimes pro series or whatever, whatever type of grips, regardless if they're cork or black foam grip. I prefer to use the split grips because I find they're more balanced and they're more comfortable to me. And But everybody has their choice. As a reference, everybody has their choice. So. This is one of my new rods that I bought for about 200 bucks, and hopefully it does really good for me. I really apologize for the dimming in this room. I'm only just filming this in my bedroom, so <laughs> hopefully you guys can all see there. It's a very good rod. I think it'll do good. I mean, if you guys think Quantum's a good brand, I mean, that's really good, but if you have other brands that you feel that you want to tell me that are good and whatnot, you know, feel free to put in the comments and all that stuff like that. Now, my second rod that I use is an open face one, which is a spinning cast. And that is a brand new rod that I've never ever used, but I've seen on TV and stuff and always thought it was a good brand and all that. This is a Daiwa, a Daiwa spinning cast. I've never used their products before, I've never used their brand, so I thought maybe why not try one. This is my first time ever owning a product by Daiwa before, has the markings right there in case you can see it says Daiwa, and it's a pretty nice reel, I really, I really like it, I mean it's pretty light, this is a medium light by the way, this is uh, for light tackle that I use like for smaller baits like drop shotting. Once again, split grip. I, I love the split grips, like I said. <laughs> uh, it's medium light. I usually, when it comes to these type of reels, I always like to fish light. So, with that being said, um, I fish bait cast with heavy stuff, and for light tackle, I always use a spinning rod. But I've never used Daiwa before. One of my friends actually suggested that this was a really good brand, and I watch a lot of fishing shows on WFN, the World Fishing Network, too, and, you know, heard some pretty good feedback about this this type of rod, so hopefully it does good for me in the summer and spring. Once again, the fishing line on there is Fireline, 10-pound test. Fireline is my favorite kind of brand of fishing line. Same with PowerPro, too. PowerPro is really good, too, just to jot that in your notes, too, in case... Uh, you want to know some good lines to use. Alright, uh, with that being said, we're going to be moving on to my lures that I will be, have so far, and just, once again, showing you guys what I have for the upcoming year for fishing, and hopefully everything that I've showed you is good, if not, like, Tell me what's better, because, you know, I want to, I'll use anything and try any lures and stuff like that and any type of rod. So, I usually be careful when I pick my stuff, because I like to have good brands and stuff. So, if you have any good brands of fishing rods that you think I should use, you know, leave them in the comments. I will be sure to look at them and be able to check them out if I can ever get my hands on some. So, with this being said, I'm going to show you guys my lures and what I have so far. Alright, so here we are with my two tackle boxes I have here of top water baits. These are all top water baits only. I have no plastics or no spinners or anything to show, unfortunately. 
because uh, it's mostly what I use is topwater baits. But, you know, maybe whatever you see in these boxes that you may like or probably heard of or think that I should try that I don't have here in the box, I'd like to hear your comments and everything that you think would be good or if you see a bait in here that you know of or what I'm going to say is one of your favorites, you know. I like to hear your favorite top water baits too. But I am open for other baits that are also good, but I'll tell you right now, one of the baits that I find I'm really horrible with is spinner baits. <laughs> yes, I know. Those uh, for spinner bait fans out there, I find I'm really worse at spinner baits. <laughs> but yeah, these are all my top water baits that I have. This is from some from last year's. Um, this is this year's top water baits that I bought that I went fishing shopping for. But as you can see, I haven't got it completely filled yet, so I'm working on that process just a little bit. Oh, you're supposed to be in there. Um, yep, these are my new ones that I bought this year, and these are some of the old ones that I've had from last year, but still look good this year. <sighs> so, to start off. We've got our Zara Spook. Yes, the Zara Spook. Such a classic lure for walking the dog action. Everybody's favorite, regardless if you're fishing smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, or northern pike, or any other type of fish that likes topwater baits, such as these, that give the walk the dog action. Now, what we have here are an assessment. We have our baby bass, which I just put down there. We have our little perch color. We have our frog color. And this one right here, I'd like to take a moment for, is this one right here. I found this one last year for Zara Spooks, regardless of what the weather was and how warm the water temperature was for bass and chain pickerel, or northern pike or anywhere else, I honestly think this was the best type of color to pick. I mean, there are other types of colors out there that I don't have yet, but I know that one there was good. And I really do recommend having this in your tackle box, this color especially, because I found this one worked really good. And all these other ones here was really good too. But everyone has their choice and everyone can pick their own colors and see what they like. Moving on, we have the Chug and Spook, a brand new lure that I bought that came out on the market, which seemed to be a pretty good bait. I never had nothing wrong with it. A lot of people were surprised of its size and thinking that bass or pickerel wouldn't hit this, but they thought wrong. I have pictures and everything of small bass about the same size as this lure attacking it and everything. Like, they're aggressive too. And just to clear the air here, I have never once caught a largemouth bass in my life. Uh, where I live, there's only smallmouth bass. We don't have largemouth bass around here. Or northern pike. We have a chain pickerel, which is the smallest of the pike family. But my dream goal is to always catch a, was always to catch a largemouth bass. And I do wonder what it, would it be like to catch one because of how they fight and stuff and they look so fun on tv to catch and stuff like that so and i know how they go about and stuff like living habits and stuff like that but as for bass fishing for largemouth they just seem really good to catch and so so much a whole lot of fun like uh i mean if you want to leave comments in the review of what it's like to catch largemouth bass, I'd be more than happy to read them. You know, but, you know, kind of bear with me. Never, um, 23 years old, never caught a largemouth bass in my life. Because where I live, we don't have any. But, you know, wouldn't mind trying. So, as for these chugging spooks, I only got three. You got different colors. Different colors and all that. You got your frogs, you got your hollow, hollow colors. And this one here... Of course, I found, out of all three, this one here was a really good one. It's the same size as the others, and it has the same colors of black and silver. I always find, with top water braids, I always find black and silvers were always really good. 
to me for some reason. I mean, there are other colors that I imagine are really good too, but for some reason for me, I always found the blacks and the silvers were always blended good together, you know? Just, I don't know, something about them was always an eye opener for fish. And regardless of size, they just always seem to hit it. Like, I've thrown topwater baits before of different colors, and they never touch it. But the, minute, but the minute I throw a black or silver one or grayish colored one, they were all over it. It's pretty funny Pretty funny how different colors work and same topwater baits lurk. Alright, we have our Skitter Pops. The Rapalas. Anybody know Rapala? They certainly should know their Skitter Pops. Their Skitter Pops are pretty well known. Sorry if they're all bunched up here, but I'll try to get them undone if I can. <laughs> uh, yes, we have our Skitter Pops here. And we have, for our colors here, we have our Silver Blue, Fire Tiger, Classic Silver, again, <laughs> Chrome, and our Frog Pattern. Now these are all different size poppers. These ones here are all the same. This one here is a little bit smaller. If you read on the box, when you first uh, purchase a Rapala Skitter Pop, they have the different sizes, which is like an SP and a number. This here is a SP5. And the other ones you see here are all SP7s. Now my personal preference I like to use is SP9s. Because I find they're a lot bigger bait, and I find they create much more of a, a bigger sound to attract bass and everything else. And I found they always work much better than any other size of the poppers, I find. Definitely a bait like this, you want to check around uh, rock walls, boulder flats, stumps, and stuff like that. I always found these baits here were also good. And shoreline sandy gravel bottoms, too, in the shallows, too. These baits are definitely really good for that. So, if you want to pick some of those up, that's what some of those look like. Next, we have our Rebel, Rebel Poppers. Uh, we have our natural fish design colors. We have our peeling colors, which are your bright whites and grays. We have our sparkly black and silver again. <laughs> yes, black and silver is one of my top favorite colors for top water baits to use. In case you didn't catch on to that already. And we have this one here, but bit the feather trailer off it, so I have to get a new feather trailer for that. These are okay poppers, I guess. These are pretty much like emergency backup poppers in case I lose my good ones. These are really good, too, so... Next on our list is our X-Wrap Pops by Rapala. These are a bait that I've had, which are really good. I only have two colors. I've only ever seen two colors on the market. I imagine there's more. We've got our white, pearl white with a chartreuse tip head. And we have, once again, black and silver. One of my favorite colors to use, you know, just to have. But I found with this type of popper, I've had a lot more luck with this color than I did with the other one there, as you can see. This color here is also another one you should keep an eye out too. You know, has a wide shaped mouth like that for extra bubble effect for the pop. You know, another pop, just like a skitter pop, you know, fish it around the same areas, but you know, just gives off a louder presentation. I really do recommend getting this color if you are shopping for poppers and wanna, you know, find out which is the best topwater bait to use. Now these next set of lures here are special to me because these lures are signature lures by Bill Dance, believe it or not. The Bass Pro Angler, of his popular show, Build Ants Outdoors. Now these lures here are called a poppin' image. I'm not sure if you can see the markings there, sorry for the camera quality. <laughs> but the, right there at the bottom, you can see the little writing there. And on the other side, they have Bill Dance's signature, if you can make that out. Once again, sorry for the cam quality. <laughs> and these are Bill Dance signature lures, these actually worked really well. They're actually a really good bait. 
And if you come across some, I recommend do picking one up or two, just in case if you don't want to lose one. You know, it's always good to have the same color as a backup, just in case you don't want to lose one popper. You'll have the same one as a backup, same color. It's always good to pick up two of the same if you really don't want to risk losing the other one. I try to take my time with these ones because I really don't want to lose those because those are really awesome baits. <laughs> okay, next we have our skitter props. Skitter props are a decent bait to use along open water sometimes. This type of bait actually leaves a bubble trail and goes subsurface and I find is really best at windier conditions when it's more choppy and not still water. This basically picks up the bubble trail and basically always works, I find, the best when other topwater baits don't work. So these are your last resort type baits I would use if I were you, but you can make these your first resort if you want. But also, I there are a different variety of colors you can get with this one, but I only have the frog pattern because that's all I had, right? Still works like a jewel, though. A lot of teeth marks in this one, too. If you can see, like, little white specks, those are teeth marks. Pretty old bait, but still... Lives up to its reputation in my tackle box. And that's uh, just another one there. That those are doubles. <laughs> and my personal favorite bait that I grew up with for years as a child when I first started using topwater baits, believe it or not, th the Torpedo. I give this lure so much praise because this lure and I have been through a lot, I will tell you right now. The Heaton Torpedo and I share a great relationship. Like, I won't ever, ever go without a topwater tackle box unless I got one of these in my box. I, I just won't. Even if I don't use it, I just want it there in my tackle box. Just there. Because the story behind this bait with me is this lure here was a the first bass I've ever caught uh, with was on this lure. Not this specific color, but the torpedo itself was my very first bass I've ever caught, which was a smallmouth bass, of course. Once again, growing up, I didn't, we don't have largemouth bass like you lucky guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the Heaton Torpedo, this is a silver blue color. Awesome, awesome bait. And those of you out there who love torpedoes would probably have the same feeling as I do. You know how you know how they work and stuff. But not only I have that, but I also have a smaller size. I find the smaller sizes work at best when they're in weedy patches and hard to reach places like hungover trees, like swamps, eel grass, you know, lily pads that are thick and stuff. If you want a tight spot to squeeze in there, use a smaller size torpedo, I find. That's if you want to use torpedoes for this size. For the open water, for like rocks, boulder flats, even around boats that are parked around docks or even underneath docks or even bridges, going over our bridges and stuff that cars go by, I recommend going with a bigger size. I mean, there are other ways to approach these size of topwater baits for this type of bait, but, you know, that's how I've always done it, and, you know, I'm just sharing my tips with you, but if you have tips that you like to share, you know, let's hear them. I'm pretty sure it'll help all of us in the long run. As we're watching these top water reviews, as for top water fans out there like me. So, yeah, remember big open water, boulder flats, anything rocky, even sandy bottoms, smaller, go like in the mushy stuff like the eel grass, the lily pads, the brush piles, bull rushes, everything you, you name it. Anything sloppy that bass basically like to live in, I'd recommend throwing this out there for a smaller size. Moving on, we have our live target walking frogs. I'm sure you've seen all these before, those of you who fish live target as well as I do. I love live target, it's a pretty good brand. We have our different color frogs here. We have our classic green frog, bullfrog color. You know, if anybody who ever catches bullfrogs as a kid, <laughs> this would be like the color. And we have our yellow colors. This is a really neat color for a frog. Kind of a funky bright yellow color. Not sure what kind of yellow frogs that would be out there in real life, but <laughs> who knows. 
uh, we have our black frogs, black to a brownish, chocolate colored frogs. Yeah, I know it's kind of funky to say, but you know, have no other way best to describe it. A walking frog, kind of just like walking the dog action, you know, twitch, twitch, you know. Kind of like a czar spook, except in like frog form, if you want to think about it, that's the best way I can think of it. So, uh, no really specific spot to, f to fish those. I find those work a lot best around boulder flats and stuff and sunken objects rather than just lily pads itself because you know frogs lily pads they're supposed to go to the other right well they can but i find these walking frogs work best on shorelines and sunken objects and stuff like that now these ones here are live target too they're copper frogs now i've seen people on youtube and wfn the world fishing network of course use these type of frogs and give really really good testimonies about these but the thing is all year last year when I did went fishing and before I started getting into YouTube and posting uh, the two episodes that I have that you watched and stuff on YouTube, this is the only lure, believe it or not, I have not caught a single bass off of or chain pickerel or anything. Not a single one. I'm not sure why I didn't catch anything off of that of these two lures because they seem to look like really great lures. Like I love the design on them. I love how they look, how they were manufactured, like they look really great. But if somebody else, uh, you know, that used these frogs and, you know, has a reason or when's the best time to use these, I'd like to hear it. Because I still got high hopes for these frogs, I really do. I haven't caught anything off them yet, but hopefully, uh, when that time comes, I hopefully it's something big. So, if you want to help me with these specific baits right there, tell me when's the best time to fish season stuff, like, regardless of seasonal, when they're pre-spawning, post-spawning, whatever, leave some comments about these, about these frogs. i really like some help with these ones. We have our, our popper frog, which I've seen on the markets, which I think is really, really good. And uh, I've never used this lure as much but i've used it enough but never really caught anything off it but just had mostly jump strikes but just missing it nothing really too spectacular chasing it nothing too big just fish jumped at it but could never really hook them with this i guess so high hopes for this one too hopefully this one does this year for me because i got a really really good feeling about this one this summer we have our excalibur popper which looks to be like a good bait I've only ever caught chain pickerel off this. I've caught like one smallmouth bass off it all year, but chain pickerel seem to love this really well. And not really much I can say about this bait. I find this bait works best. This certain type of bait works best in summer. Not so much spring. But your guess is as good as mine when it's the best time to use poppers because I always find during the end of spring to summer is when when I use poppers but then again everybody's location can be different you know from where you're fishing from so different water temper temperatures different climate you know stuff like that so different lures may work in different areas so that's just how it works right I suppose last but not least we have the bomber bomber walking bait which is once again like a zero spook but more like round I guess pretty interesting bait the best thing about this bait is this bait is also designed for salt water and fresh water too so this thing goes both ways in both uh water can water types so it's pretty cool with this i'm not sure what would bite this for top water i'm assuming striped bass or something like that maybe a striper that's what i'm assuming but smallmouth bass seem to like this type of bait too so it's actually really good all right and that concludes of this first box hopefully i have put all my faith into this and once again if you want to help me out with the copper frogs since i never caught a bass off these before I'm not really sure when's a good time to use these you know if you want to help me out i'll be glad to read in the comments below about the copper frog and see when's the best time to use frog type baits Alright, that concludes the first box. 
Now here's this year's box that I've bought and went fishing shopping for. Not really much here, as you can see, I still got a little more compartments to fill. But this is what I got so far this year. We have the Hula Popper. And I heard really good stories about the Hula Popper. Apparently this is a big northern pike popularity type lure. Now, as a confession to, like I said about the largemouth bass, I've never caught a northern pike in my life. But... I've seen on videos that the hula popper was very popular with these things, so why not be for chain pickerel? Because that's what we have around here is chain pickerel only, so I don't see why this wouldn't be such a bad bait, so i am got my hand, fingers crossed for this one. We have jitterbugs. We have jitterbugs here, different colors. We have our frog pattern, and we have our flat black jitterbug. As you can see there, it says right there in the markings. Jitterbug. I really like how this one dances on top of the water, man. It's kind of like funky when it moves. It's just like makes a little bubble trail and stuff. It used to make me laugh when I was a kid. It used to run right funky in the water. I don't know. It's just something funny about it as a kid when I used to see this thing scurry across the water. It's pretty funky looking. Uh, next, we have our live target smelt prop bait that's in a form of a smelt. Uh... I really haven't used this bait in my life yet, but I just seen it and I thought maybe I'd pick it up and try it. So I really don't know much about this bait and how it works, but maybe in one of the videos in the future, I will probably give my thoughts on it, hopefully when I use it. We have our Rapala X-Rap Pop props, sorry, uh, in classic gold and silver. Nope. God, I hate it when they bunch up like that. Uh, we have our classic silver prop bait, three hooks on this one. This one has three hooks. So regardless of where the bass or any type of fish bites this, you know, it's going to hit a hook. Just like with buzz baits, I recommend with buzz baits uh, to get trailer hooks. So they may not always miss the hook with the skirt in it, but they may always bite the trailer hook. That's just a little quick tip for uh, buzz baits. Anybody that uses buzz baits out there. Okay. Another one out here is a uh, walking stick bait, walk the dog action, is another type of topwater bait called the Splitting Image. And this one here is another one of my favorite colors, uh, yellowish chartreuse to greenish to really light blues. This lure here oops, is also a Bill Dance signature lure. Yeah, Bill, in case you guys didn't know, Bill Dance was kind of... My favorite angler until, uh, well, he still is, but then I got other favorites like Scott Martin, Kevin Van Dam, and all them guys like that. You know, really big time hot shots. But uh, Bill Dance will always be a classic fan favorite of mine. So uh, he got one of his baits here. These are doubles of his baits because just in case I lose one, I won't be so upset. <laughs> We have our live target minnow popper, which is basically a clear popper, but the only thing in this one is, is it has three bait fish minnows, which is supposed to act like a topwater ginger bait fish that can't go underwater, which is basically dancing on top of the water, trying to scatter away. So I would assume this is just like a popper type based minnow with a feather trailer hook and everything. So I have never really tried this before. This is pretty much new, so I'm hoping I get some good results on that. Now, if any of you guys know Gary Yanomoto, who is very famous for Senkos, I was actually very surprised to come across this, this lure that he makes top water baits. So I thought, why not try it? The color on it looks pretty good. It's kind of like a sparkly hologram with blues to pure whites to silvers. Seems like a good color. And it has the Gary Yanomoto logo right inside the eye of the pupil. Which seems like a really good bait, but hopefully uh, this one does good for me. I never actually thought Gary Yanomoto makes top water baits. I thought they were very well known for their Senkos and all that, because you know, with the Senko being the very top top popular bait, plastic bait, followed by tube jigs for bass. Last but not least, we got our Garbo Garbo poppers. Uh, that's just how they. 
are just pronounced, I guess. That's just garble poppers. And we got these in different colors, as you can see here. And uh, with these ones here, I never really used these ones before, but I've seen them, so I decided to try them out. Give them a chance. Oop. That there was our just white to grayish beige color. This is our baby bass color here, in the shape of baby bass. All right, so with all this being said, uh, these are all my lures that I bought. So if you've seen anything in here that you've liked or is your favorite, put it in the comments below. Or if you have a suggestion of any lure that you think I should try, besides spinnerbaits, because I am no good at spinnerbaits and I personally can't stand them. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, if you have anything, suggestions that I should use, I will either pick some up and put them on the videos, on the show, or give thoughts or feedback on them whatever you guys decide and hopefully whatever you saw in here for top water baits you guys like so thanks for watching the review so with all that being said i've showed you my rods and my lures and all that other good stuff like that and basically i always have hooks and stuff like that so you already know what those are um with all the good stuff out of the way and that's pretty much what i was using and all you seen there was everything all in one, I just want to take the time to thank everybody again for subscribing. What little subscriptions I had, what little likes, and what little views you have, because like I said, I'm just a beginner. I'm just learning how to use the YouTube channel and stuff like that, and you know, once I get used to it, and hopefully if you guys like it, I will continue to do what I do. I mean, I'm no professional, I'm no bass professional, I don't have, I don't like have career earnings and everything like that in bass tournaments and stuff like that but I'm just you know it's my hobby it's what I've always wanted to do you know it's what I like to do so I just want to let everybody know that more videos and stuff will be coming up and hopefully if I have friends that'll help me we might be doing something different with the whole let's go fishing thing I mean if I know it's kind of like a funky title, I mean it's a title I came up with, I mean we're thinking of something better to call the channel, we're not too sure, but if you got any ideas, any ideas for like a title of what I should name my channel, I mean help would be great from you fishermen, I don't want to take anybody else's or anything like that, I want to have everything on my own, so if you also have any ideas like that, I'd be I'd be glad to hear them in the comments and stuff like that because I want it to be everything original because I'm new, never had a YouTube account before, and, you know, this is me, you know, doing the fishing and everything like that. Since the last two episodes, you barely didn't see me fishing like that, so yeah, it's me. <laughs> so, hopefully, if you guys can help me out a little bit, that'd be great, and I will be gladly be putting more videos and stuff out and all that and I really hope you guys uh, sit back and enjoy everything that I do in the upcoming future so April 1st coming up I'm all ready as you can see but by the time April hits I should have more videos and more stuff worked on so I thank you for your time and I'm really glad that you are sort of helping me with the likes and the subscriptions and stuff like that just to get my foot in the door so I thank you and hope to see more videos on the water here soon. So thank you very much.